what is up guys, MKBHD here. And uh, all right, it's the one we've all been waiting for. Apple held an event today at their new spaceship campus in the new Steve Jobs Theater to unveil a couple things that may or may not have leaked a little bit beforehand, but that we're excited to finally see in person. So there's a couple low key smaller announcements before the big one, which was first of all, the new Apple TV, which now supports 4K and HDR. We also got to see the new Apple Watch Series 3, which now has a cellular connection and can make and take phone calls. So that's all good stuff and we appreciate that. But what we were really there to see is the new iPhone. And what we got was two new iPhones. We got iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and we got iPhone 10. Not really sure what 9 would be. Maybe we're just skipping that all together. That's cool too. So iPhone 8 and 8 Plus are a spec bump to the current iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So nearly identical design, but it now has the glass back to support Qi wireless charging, which is awesome to see. It has a true tone display, but the same sizes and resolutions and a new A11 Bionic chip inside and some slightly updated 12 megapixel cameras. And it comes in a new rose gold color, which I think is more of like a, a copper or a faded like sandblasted kind of look. So bottom line, this is definitely an improvement. It's an upgrade over what we currently have. But even though this is called iPhone 8, this is definitely more iPhone 7S. Let's not get it twisted. But then came the one more thing, and that was iPhone 10. Don't you dare call it iPhone X. It's iPhone 10. So this is the phone that looks like all the dummies and models I was showing you guys earlier this year. And now seeing it in person now, those things, those things are staggeringly accurate. So this is my focus in the time we got to play with them. Hopefully I can do them justice on video. So iPhone 10, like we expected, has the larger 5.8 inch OLED display, but in a smaller body than the other iPhones, thanks to the tiny bezels. So you have the display going really close to the edges of the corners of the display, curving at the edges, and then has that notch in the middle of the top. And my main question when playing with those early mockups was, you know, how would Apple handle the notch in the display with the rounded corners? Well, now we have our answer. You get your time on the left side of it and your signal and battery on the right side. And then basically depending on what app you're in, the clock and the signal and battery will turn black or white to contrast with the background. So if you're in a dark app, they turn white. If you're in a white app, like Apple Music or something, they turn black. So basically you can always see them. And then certain apps, most of them actually, will go full screen and fill the entire display around the notch, which is really cool. It kind of looks like the essential phone with a much wider notch. It gives you that immersive look. But then other apps, a couple, maybe watching a video sometimes, you can ignore that top bar and just show a rectangular aspect ratio. But I guess the goal here is definitely to be immersive. So the whole point of the display, filling up the whole front of the phone, is that you can fill it anytime possible. So developers will be on that pretty quickly. So anytime an app can go full screen, it definitely will. And then the other big question was, there's no home button, so how do you go home? Well, the answer is, it's a gesture now. So to go home on the iPhone X, it's no longer a button, you swipe up from the bottom of the phone. So basically anytime you see that bar at the bottom, that represents the home swipe, and you swipe up to go home. And to get to the multitasking panel, you swipe halfway up. So you gotta remember the difference between those two. And then there are three different swipe down gestures on this phone, ready? Swipe down from the middle for notifications, swipe down from the right corner for a control center, and swipe down in the middle of the home screen for search. So basically all these operations, you know, interacting with the phone that are now done on the screen, they're all gestures to make that possible. You can even wake the display by just touching it once. It's a lot to get used to, but I'm willing to give it a shot. It's kind of what you get yourself into when you remove all the buttons. And then the big story with this phone is that the front facing sensors in that big tab up at the top are really advanced and they kind of have to be because Apple has replaced touch ID and fingerprints with face ID and facial recognition. So I didn't get to test this much at all yet, but I definitely plan on it because Apple's made a big deal out of it and a lot of big claims about how reliable it needs to be. You know, million to one chance that someone else can get into it with something other than your face. It needs to be really secure because it's literally replacing Touch ID. But that's something I'll have to test for the full review. Now, the last major change on the outside is the new cameras. So yes, the vertical camera orientation is new, and just like I always say, I think it looks better here in real life than it did in the renders. And the iPhone 10 is rocking those two slightly updated 12 megapixel cameras again, and this time they're both optically stabilized. So the telephoto lens should do a bit better, have a better success rate in low light, 
do better with video, etc. So obviously photo and video quality is another thing that I gotta test when I get it. But one thing you'll notice is Apple is really trying to give some more customization options in their portrait modes. I think that's probably triggered by what Samsung just did with the Note 8. So now when you open the portrait mode on the iPhone, you will get these extra modes that will try to adjust the look of the lighting. So you can go from natural light to studio light to contour light to even stage light, which is really dramatic. And these will all also now work with the front facing camera as well. So you can do portrait mode with the front facing camera and mess with all these camera effects on your face, which you know is gonna take your selfie game to the next level, at least I think so. And yeah, you can actually change all this stuff after you've taken the photo as well. So that right there, the front facing camera improvements, I mean, honestly is enough reason for some people to consider getting this phone, hilariously enough. So the front facing camera will also work great with this new feature in iOS called Animojis, which is literally animated emojis. It's like seven or eight emojis with faces on them that move as you move. So in case you're ever wondering, what did the fox say? Sorry, that's a, okay, that's a terrible joke. But yeah, now in iMessage, you can send short videos with your voice coming from an emoji. It's really good at making people make weird faces, not gonna lie. Yeah, other than that, the rest of what's new with the iPhone 10 is the same as what's new with iPhone 8. So spec bump to the A11 Bionic chip, so it should have buttery smooth performance. The glass back, of course, enabling Qi wireless charging, which I'm excited to start seeing everywhere now. The OLED display is also now True Tone enabled. And yeah, it's this, this beautiful new gesture enabled, fingerprinty slab of glass and metal that will start at a thousand bucks when it goes on sale in November. Now, are there concerns with it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's no ProMotion display, which isn't really a concern actually, but the brightness of the OLED panel was in question when the specs were revealed. Nobody got to take this phone outside or anything, but I can already tell my Note 8 display got brighter for what it's worth. And now the power button on the side is also a little bit bigger and you can hold it down to trigger Siri. And I'm telling you right now, that's gonna cause a lot of accidental Siri triggers in pockets around the world for the next year. Just throwing that out there, but whatever. I'm glad it's finally revealed. The rumors are over and this is iPhone 10. Of course, both these phones, the 10 and the 8 and 8 Plus will go under the microscope for the full review in the next couple weeks and months. So definitely subscribe already to be the first to see these phones when they come out. But uh, I am liking what I've seen so far. I'm really into the 10. Maybe you are too. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.